Hello and welcome to this next video on the Orca series. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to run geometry optimizations and how to then visualize the output, uh, especially as it pertains to looking at molecular orbitals. So whenever we're running Orca simulations, the first thing that we need to do is create an input file. Uh, you can do this either via a text editor um, or you can use Avogadro to generate uh, an input file. Um, I've had some success using uh, Avogadro. It's a pretty nice wizard for creating it. Um, one of the issues I've had, though, is that I haven't been able to visualize the output using Avogadro, at least for Orca 5.0. So I've had to use ChemCraft for that, but uh, let's get started and I'll talk about that later on. So let's just do the water molecule. So first of all, I'm going to draw an oxygen there. And then thankfully, uh, Avogadro already creates the hydrogens there. Uh, so first of all, we want to do a quick MM um, optimization just to sort of get um, a nice little more optimized structure. So once I've done that, I want to go to extensions and then go down to Orca and then generate Orca input. So here is the sort of wizard for creating that. So there's a basic one, there's an advanced one. Um, the advanced one has a bunch of different options for controlling the DFT type, controlling different things about the um, optimization or other run types in Orca. But uh, I'm going to stick with um, the simple or basic version, because I just want to look at the geometry optimization. I don't really care about the method. The basis set can stay as default. That's all okay. So there's the part up here with the drop down windows, and then there's a the part at the bottom, which is a text part, which we can actually edit if you're comfortable doing that. So I'm gonna leave everything mostly the same, but uh, I'm going to add some lines to the, the script. So the input script. So uh, I find that it was necessary to do this to be able to visualize the molecular orbitals. Um, so one really good resource for the uh, input parameters for Orca is the Orca input library. So I've come here a few times to get different uh, sort of, I guess, boilerplate versions for what I want to achieve. So uh, Orca input library, now it says here, it's definitely not the manual. It doesn't really explain so much about why uh, they have structured their inputs in the way that they have. But if you just wanted a quick fix uh, to run your calculation and then you could go read the manual after that to see why they did what they did. So I'm gonna go over here on the left-hand side to visualization and printing. So it tells you a few of the visualization programs. Now I'm on Windows uh, 11 Pro and I find that the one that was easiest for me to use uh, was ChemCraft. Um, Chemcraft uh, has a free trial. Um, after that, you have to pay for it. But uh, during the free trial, you can definitely make use of it. Um, so what I want to look for is the um, controlling the input or output of the ORCA um, calculation. So I'm trying to visualize the ORCA um, molecular orbitals. So I'm going to go down to here to visualizing molecular orbitals from Orca. Then the one that I'll get is this one, which is a normal print, print basis, print MO. So that's the prints, the basically the occupation of the different orbitals and uh, different data about them. So I'll come over here to Avogadro and then I'll create a new line and I'll just paste that in there, copy and paste just like that. Then I'll go over here and click generate and then save it somewhere. I have an Orca run file uh, directory on my desktop. So that's where I'm going to save it. So I just call this H2O um, and then that should be uh, saved there. Okay. So the next thing is, um, of course, you might want to know more about these different keywords. You might want to know what RHF means, what uh, this particular basis set is, why the structure is as it is. Um, so in that case, I encourage you to go and download the Orca manual. Um, and have a read through this. Now, this is a really nice, well put together document. It's not just um, expecting you to know everything about these calculations, but um, it's written with both the expert user and the novice in mind. Now, when running these calculations, at least when you're starting out, uh, section six, the general structure of the input file and sections eight, running typical calculations are gonna be your best friends. 
they're the ones that you're going to be most interested in. The others, of course, are worth reading as well. Um, a lot of effort has been put into those. So once you've uh, contented yourself with the different uh, options that are available, you can go back and um, with your input file, just uh, start to run it. So I'm going to open up a command uh, terminal. So I need to navigate to my desktop and then change the directory to my working directory for Orca. So that's on my desktop. Then I just want to check that the file is there. So I'll get a list of all the contents of the directory, which is just DIR. So I can see there that h2o.imp has been placed in that. Um, so then I'm going to run the Orca. So I press Orca or type Orca h2o.imp. And then I want to, of course, send that to an output file. So that's h2o.out, um, hit enter, and then let that run. And then once that's run, my cursor will stop blinking there. That was pretty quick. I can then go to that directory and just see what um, files have been created. So there's a bunch of different files in here. There's um, the output file, which is the one that's most uh, valuable, I guess, right now for me. That's the one that contains the uh, information about the geometry optimization. But there are other things in here. There's the trajectory file. There's a file called uh, .gbw, which will be important if your calculation, for example, field and you wanted to restart, uh, but you didn't want to restart totally. So the information there would be useful to uh, restart calculation. So I'm going to click on this one and open it in my text editor. So this is my um, output file here. So this is orca.5.0 uh, uh, geometry optimization. So it starts off like this. Um, it's got all of these people who have contributed. Um, thank you to those people. Uh, you've, your contributions are very valuable. So then um, here's just a copy of the input file. And then after that, it says the geometry optimization run and all the information there. So to just to check that our calculation has been successful, we search hooray in the file and we see hooray, the optimization has converged. And then after that, we find out that uh, the different information on the uh, calculation that has been uh, completed successfully. And if I go the whole way to the bottom, uh, I can see more information on that. Um, here where it says Orca terminated uh, normally, and that's a very good thing to read. Okay, so now that I've read that, the next thing that I need to do is I need to have a look at my molecular orbitals. That's what I talked about, or even just have a look at my optimized geometry. So as I said, um, I've had some difficulties um, with Orca, or not Orca 5.0 being read in Avogadro. So I'll show you that. So if I try to open this, um, the output file in Avogadro, it says reading molecular file field. Okay. So I know it works for older versions of Avogadro, but at least not on my system. It doesn't seem to work too well. Um, then I'm going to call up my uh, Chemcraft. So Chemcraft 1.8 seems to work pretty well for me. So uh, file open, and then I'll open my output. So my output was H2O. Okay. So there's my water molecules. That's great. I can see the optimization steps like this, how that goes, and then there's my optimized geometry. So of course, the next thing that I want to do is I want to like visualize the molecular orbitals. So on the optimized geometry, I go down to tools, click on render molecular orbitals. So then I can see the different molecular orbitals that exist. So I'm gonna choose a few around the uh, homo lumo. So you can see here, it says molecular orbital and then a certain number, then the occupancy of that orbital. So the number of electrons that are there, then the energy of that orbital. So I'm gonna click on these four, which are two either side. So here's the orbital number five is the last one that's fully occupied. So that's going to be the uh, molecular orbital, which is the highest occupied. So that's the homo and then uh, molecular orbital number six is going to be the LUMO. Okay, so click OK for that. Um, and then those should be um, shown here. So there we go. We have the different ones. Now, if we click on it, nothing shows up, right? So the first thing we have to do is click on the one that we're interested in, then click Show Isosurface, and then both signed. Uh, so that's both, um, both phases of the, um, the, molecular orbital. So there's, that's the um, 
what's that? That's the homo molecular orbital. And then this is the lumo. Okay. So that's just kind of like how those are going to be uh, rendered for us. So that was just sort of a quick introduction to uh, running an ORCA calculation, uh, generating an input via Avogadro. Um, I think we can generate an input as well via Camcraft, but um, I, I find Avogadro just to be a little bit easier to use. But unfortunately, with uh, ORCA 5.0, I haven't been able to get it to um, work perfectly with the output files, but I find that Chemcraft works really well with the ORCA output files, at least so far. Um, so I recommend that at least for the trial that it's available. Um, if you can get the full version or get the, the license after that, that's great. But if not, at least you can use the trial like me. Um, so uh, thank you for watching. Um, stick around for future videos and tutorials on how to use Orca. Thanks for watching.